A concussion is some form of neurological deficit that happens because of a bump, blow, or jolt to the head. In broad terms, concussions fall under a much larger spectrum of what are called traumatic brain injuries, a major cause of death and disability. There are about 250,000 people who are hospitalized as a result of a traumatic brain injury each year and about 50,000 deaths. On the concussion side, which again represents the vast majority, there's about 1.8 million people who present to an emergency room every year following a concussion. There are another estimated 2 million people who sustain a concussion and then either don't seek treatment or seek treatment through an outpatient mechanism. Inside Science. In recent years, much attention has been paid to the problem of head injuries in sports, particularly concussions sustained in sporting events. I'm the, the uh, director of our Brain Injury Center, where we have uh, a large team that deals with concussions. So we'll see four or 500 folks each month, and most of them come through the sports medicine clinic because most of the concussions are sports related. This attention has led to greater awareness of the problem among doctors, fans, coaches, and the players themselves. The Pittsburgh Steelers in particular have had a very long history of commitment to the reality of concussion in football. They were the first franchise to have a neurosurgeon, Joe Maroon, on the medical staff. Many of the tools and technologies that we use to evaluate concussions that are used on a national basis trace their roots to work that was related to this issue with the Pittsburgh Steelers. But the impacts of concussions and traumatic brain injuries are felt far beyond competitive sports. Whether by accident or ill intent, head injuries are seen all too often in other walks of life. The military, where soldiers serving in war zones are exposed to explosions. Car crashes, where head injuries are common. People who take bad falls. And tragically, even small children are vulnerable. If we look where the head injuries occur outside of sports, you can almost break it into age range, right? So for, for young children, biggest risk is probably what we we'll call non-accidental trauma, or in other words, it would be child abuse, where we know that that happens and that's a leading cause of brain injury under two years of age. As you start to get older, then it's things like falls and bicycle accidents. Understanding these problems can lead to change, Proctor said. I mean, we, we do know that driving slower makes a difference. I don't know that we'll see a giant impact there. I do have to say car companies have, have led the way in safety, right? So we've actually seen reductions in uh, traffic fatalities for a number of years in a row just because cars are safer between the airbags and the analog brakes and the traction control. Traction control is probably one of the bigger things that's really helped prevent injuries. And Okonkwo said that some improvements are also being seen in professional sports. The quality of the concussion evaluation and concussion protocol at the professional sports level uh, has had a trickle-down effect that has broadly impacted recreational sports across our country in a very positive way. This is Inside Science. Inside Science. If you enjoyed this edition, Follow us on the web and social media. Powered by the American Institute of Physics and a coalition of underwriters.